Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to welcome you to our today's masterclass, which will be dedicated to the relationships between credit and sales. Uh, this topic is a bit surprising to me, but as far as I can see from our conversations and from what is on top in LinkedIn, in terms of credit management, we've got so many questions about how to build a relationship with salespeople. And although I personally believe that this good relations with between sales and credit should already be an industry standard, the more and more people are asking about the same thing for, I would say, decades. I was already surprised when in 2000, I think in 2009, I came to the conference, to quite big uh, credit management conference, and people started to ask and to started to speak about relationships between sales and credit. And I was surprised because to me, that was something strange to me that was already kind of obvious things. But this is not yet the case to the quite big number of companies and businesses around the globe. Therefore, we decided to make a masterclass about a way from conflict, from dispute to collaboration between credit and sales. Mainly, it will, be, it will be built on my personal experience. How did I do that? Um, as I will say later, this is not necessarily it will work in your case exactly the same way. So what you will see, uh, the points I will mark is just like a milestones, uh, just like Lego bricks, if you wish which you can use in, in whatever order you believe is correct, with except for very, very first one. Uh, the first brick is change of a mindset. Without, without this brick, without this necessary step you need to take in order to build your relationship with sales, nothing else will work. The change of the mindset it's just like right attitude or correct attitude, which makes you able to do all the father steps. How does it work? And how did it work for me? I came, I came to what is called corporate or um, trade credit management from the bank. And I used to be security officer and I was taking very, very seriously my role of protection of company assets. And I came to the company uh, with the clear purpose of protection. I was protecting company assets and I had very, very smart, very very, very good manager as a CFO, and he was managing me. And I, I was saying that, okay, I'm protecting assets. And he was kind of, I, I believed in the very beginning that he was kind of supporting me in this respect, like, okay, there is a guy who is protecting our accounts receivable, which is very good. And then there was a big number of requests to increase credit lines. And I told him that I will be standing on our current limits as long as, uh, as long as I am able to. And then he asked why. I was completely surprised. I was completely surprised because I thought I was doing a good job for him and for the company. And I was protecting company assets from the abuse of the customers. And then he asked me a question, quite a simple one. He asked me, Andre, uh, how much profit do we get from the goods on our warehouse? I was unable to answer. Well, it is quite clear that uh, goods on warehouse do not bring any profit at all. 
I didn't answer to him, but I understood that uh, our receivables exist not for creation of job for me as a credit controller for any other credit person in the world. Receivables do not exist, so we can report on them because it is necessary to, to, to have them uh, to have them in balance sheet or everything, or to, 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 to have it as a working capital. It doesn't really matter. The only reason, if we look really seriously at the purpose of existence of this credit portfolio, accounts receivable, or whatever way we call it, is to sell is to get more competitive advantages for our company. There is no other reason. Therefore, and this actually changed my mindset completely. That was really a milestone in my career. That day, I understood that since receivables and since credit exists to sell, to support trade, this is my job to support my sales colleagues, to help them. I cannot do job, my job professionally if I am not helping them to sell. There are other different views on that, but main topic is receivables exist to sell. And later on, um, when I was writing already in my consulting career, I found that the the primary consumer of credit management job, whatever way you look at it, will be sales because this is really sales team life is changing because of credit. Because when they come to a customer, they sh should come with a competitive proposal. We either sell or not. Customer buys either our product or somebody else's product. And if it is not our product, we sit on our goods in the warehouse and wait for another customer. Later on, in the end, I will explain that there is some reservation to that, but in, mainly in case, uh, in case we need to have credit, we, we, we should grant credit to our customer, this credit is to be used to sell more and get competitive advantages. Having this mindset, we are able to go to do to further steps we will discuss today if you have questions i'll continue if you have questions please don't hesitate to to type them in the chat don't don't hesitate to ask me questions and we will we will have a q a session in the end i hope we will we will not abuse our time today so what is the next step what was the next step to me um it might sound surprising, but the next step is learning. I start to learn. Obviously, I was quite okay in terms of credit management, but the uh, main thing for me was to understand the needs of our customers whom we deal with, so understand what do they need. Then, second thing, uh, I need to understand what are the needs of my primary internal consumer, we, who is sales team, and I start to speak to them. Although it was hard, because as you, those of you who, who may read uh, the announcement to this event, that, that, that this, is, this was the real story. I came to the sales meeting and the regional manager of the team presented me like, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Andrei Sichka, who left you without bonus last month. This was exactly the same case. The, everything I was able to say in response, I said, okay, yep, thank you very much for welcoming me. Yes, I am your enemy. And I will continue to be your enemy, which wasn't true because my CFO changed my mindset. Uh, and then I started to learn. I was trying to understand how our customers are using our credit. And then applying, just to give you several examples, I just found that although they are, the length of their working capital cycle is about 30 days, we provide only 10. So they need to find some money 
to finance ourselves. They are not abusing, they are investing their money in, 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 you know, in working with us in that trade. They invest money. Then um, I was trying to understand how this wholesale trade person work. What do they need? What, uh, you know, how do they go for, you know, for what, what are their sales target? Whether or not it is feasible, what sales these, you know, what support these sales are requiring. This is, by the way, how the concept, if you visiting, if you attending our master classes, and we will be speaking about it later on, uh, this actually gave a birth to the concept of credit demand. We will not be touching that deeply, but credit demand is an important thing. And it was born exactly in these discussions with, with our sales colleagues. Technically speaking, this was the question of a sales director who said, how can we know that if we, how can we know that our sales are properly supported by necessary amount of credit? And he gave in even another quite interesting principle he gave, we should not have reason we are undersell. So we should not undersell because every day we are competing for our sales. And uh, can you please mute yourself? Hello. So we every day we compete, every day we invest resources in order to achieve more sales. And so there should be no reasons due to which we undersell. Therefore, this means that if, for instance, we have a plan to sell, let's say, for $10 million, then we got 30 days credit term. This means that we're supposed to have a credit provided to customer of at least eight, you know, 800 something. Oh, sorry, eight, eight million, uh, yeah, 800 something. Otherwise, it will simply not enough. We cannot expect our, or otherwise, we should know where our customers will get this money, we, where our customers will get this finance in order to trade with us. If they simply don't have money, this will be nothing more than cash in advance. We can speak about cash in advance. Again, sometimes people make me guilty that uh, saying that I am against cash in advance. I never against cash in advance. If you can um, get advance payments from your customer without providing them with credit, please do so. If your company is able to afford a very strict, like no money, no honey credit policy, please do so. That's the right way to manage credit. But this would be luxury for a very limited number of companies. We will discuss that later today. So I start learning and I start to understand what is the life of a salesperson. It's not only an abuse credit in order to meet they are sales target. There are other things we can do and we will be speaking about that. So the more you learn, the more information you absorb, you the better uh, the better you understand your customers and uh, life of your colleagues you, you deal with and you work with every day. To me, the most interesting thing in my career was the project on which we started to model finance of our distributors, of our direct customers. I was not very good in accounting, I was not very good in FP&A, but thanks God I had very, very knowledgeable colleagues in this respect, and I had very interesting uh, sales colleagues, again, very knowledgeable, It's they, they were like sales development managers, we were working with them and working on this project. I started to understand, you know, lots of things I just said above, like working capital and everything. So modeling this distributor, it was actually project not related to credit directly. It was about different things. But what we found is that I understood that 
there are lots of things we don't know we didn't knew uh, we didn't know about our customer before and now we understand we understand how do they make their business what are their difficulties what are their problems it's just as obvious for me now that time that was completely new but with this new knowledge i came to myself colleagues and started to work with them in different way now it is it, for, for me, it is much more clear because then I had a, uh, I watched the, the course by Joe Pimbley, who said that, uh, you know, success and credit is not dependent on the credit risk models, on policies, procedures, everything. The only factor which defines success and credit is understanding of customer's business. Now I know that, but that time I didn't know that. However... I mean, if I knew that, I was I was uh, already I, I would be you know ten times more motivated uh, to do that project. But I was already motivated more than hundred percent. So, learning, it's 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 a constant time. It's a constant thing to do. Learn about your portfolio. Learn about your customer. Learn about your stakeholders because we don't have only sales. There are also treasuries. There are also finance. There are also uh, accounting. There are also logistics, general management, so on and so forth. And all these needs, all their needs, are to be found and satisfied somehow. Because if we look much more general way. Um, Credit function in, within the company becomes successful by contributing to the success of others. And to contribute properly, to make sure that our contribution is properly, is appreciated, we need to provide right contribution. Because otherwise it would look like people are coming for us for, uh, you know, asking us for apple and we give them sandwich. This would never work. This would never work. We say, okay, we try to improve relations with somebody, but when they come, when they come to us for, for help, you know, to, to move company forward, and we say, sorry, we have credit policy, we got procedures, we, I cannot help you anyhow. No, this doesn't work. This is not relations. We need, we need to find something which will be appreciated, which will help them to do their job. And in case of sales... In case of sales, this means that credit management help them to sell more. As soon as they see that with good, you know, maintaining good relations with us, they can sell more or they can maintain high sales. They will appreciate, they start appreciate these relations. But one step before that, we need to, to start doing the legal break number three offer solutions offering solutions in terms of credit management is just like good customer service it's first of all please don't get me wrong this does not mean uh, we need to we we have to say yes to every proposal no this would never be respected and this way we will never we will never do job as credit management but our efforts to say yes to any profitable sale, meaning finding a solution, finding right terms of credit for every customer will be really helpful. So each time we receive a request, we need to find a solution or try our best to find a solution. And if we have to say no, sometimes, this is the only solution for this exact moment we need to provide possible we need to provide options how this no this today's no could be converted into tomorrow's yes so sometimes we need to be able to say no in a way it is better than yes for instance once uh, once my my colleague, my sales colleague, came to me and said, "We need to ship to this customer above above credit limit because we've got this urgent 
sales opportunity and we need to do something about that. I did my analysis and I found that, first of all, uh, if we ship these goods, if we make an exception, they, would be, they won't be able to pay on time and I had proof for that. Second thing, we put, so we, we take additional credit risk um, nearly for nothing because they won't pay on time. The sales we make will be actually, uh, you know, we will have the same sales over a bit longer period if we don't simply, if, if we don't do that. So reasons for not doing that were much more stronger than reasons for doing that. We had a chat, we discussed, I said, okay, I can tell you yes. I can find a possibility to ship to this customer now, but the, everything we will achieve will be plus minus zero in longer, in, 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 longer, in longer period of time. He took a pause and gave me a call next morning and said, look, you better don't release this cell solder. Let's find another solution. So my no was better than yes, but obviously I had to work on it. I had to work on it. And in more general terms, um, you see, we don't have, we don't have conflict with sales. We, 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 we should always have dispute because dispute guarantees us different views. I can tell you a lot of things created by me were created after the strong dispute with my sales colleagues, different instruments, different views, different approaches to what we do. And I mean, in finding better approaches, uh, development and uh, progress is impossible without disputes. And we will always have different and we will always have different views and we will always have disputes with other with other with our stakeholders and we should never stop that the the thing is uh but we should never have a conflict conflict means that of oh, my life would be what 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 do I, what i understand under the conflict uh, it's just like my life would be better if you do not exist like my life would be good if there would be uh, my life as a credit manager would be good if there is no sales this this means conflict the same story from sales people they say okay i mean real position if i can be funny drastic uh to say like what is the position of sales in very general understanding of credit managers like no credit limits no credit term and if somebody can kill that that credit manager would be very good but this wasn't help. This, this, this will not help the company because then there will be bad debts, then there will be overdue. I've seen a couple of times such a company who you better don't see it, but they, they, they operate. It is possible. So this is the conflict. We are not challenging the existence of somebody or somebody's position or somebody's right to express the position. But what we really challenge, but we, we can challenge our our... Uh, our views challenge our own views first and then look at our uh, look at our position with eyes of uh, with with the eyes of a counterpart either logistics treasury and everything and we need to balance all these interests and this is our job so for that we need to know all possible views and offer solutions the more solutions we offer the better business partner we are to me, credit management exists just because we are able to offer solutions. If we simply say no money, no honey, like I said above, well, no one, no one appreciate, we, we, no one will appreciate us. You know, computer can do that. Uh, good another good example is credit control. You know, if the job of credit management is mirror stop shipments or ban shipments when there is an overdue on account or the credit limit is exceeded for that there is no need of a human being of a headcount every every single erp system can do that better than any human being i can promise you but this is not the purpose of our job so offering solutions 
Um, you know, quite bright example uh, of offering solutions was in my career because we had quite a risky market and we had to cover this, uh, our receivables to quite big extent uh, with bank guarantees. And this bank guarantee was a requirement to have higher credit. And when the I was visiting customer with uh, with my sales colleagues and the customer said, look, uh, we, we appreciate your view on our bigger volume because we believe that the sales volume could be bigger. Uh, but they say, we, we don't see that volume and we don't see that reason to increase the band guarantee. So we don't say, we don't have empirical confirmation of that volume. So we, we thought deeply, I spoke with my colleagues in headquarters, with my CFO, and what we, the solution we found was quite simple. We said, okay, if you don't believe in this volume, we will give you higher credit limit exceptionally for three weeks. You will see it, and then uh, you will simply increase the bank guarantee accordingly. And this is what we did, and this is exactly what happened. In two weeks, They've seen the volume, they've seen the significantly higher volume than they did before. And they immediately, for them, increase of the bank guarantee was actually was not a problem. They simply increased the bank guarantee and we were cool in, in just three weeks. In just three weeks, we had higher volume covered uh, with, with the credit limit covered by the bank guarantee just because we made a first step. We offered solutions that offer words accepted. And I don't know, I don't remember how many times the sales director was recalling this case of making first step and as a as positive cooperation between credit and sales. But there is something else we can do. And this something else is sharing of our knowledge. I believe some of you already heard or many of you or all of you may heard about the training or in credit management for salespeople. Uh, my first attempt to do that was in, 2000, in 2002. Like my, my still, it, it, it was still my first year in corporate career. And I created a first Oh, well, from from what I'm doing now, it's it's even difficult to call a training. Uh, just share with you personal experience. So I created something for I was given within the quite big program for two days. I was given about four hours slot to train wholesale sales representatives about credit management and credit control. Um, in the end, the time I had was only hour and a half. And I prepared, I think it was like 10 pages, uh, well, paper. I mean, among 10, 10 pages was the first title, you know, the, the title sheet or title slide was, you know, completely empty, only with the name on it. So it was like maybe, maybe, I don't know, 10 to 9 pages. And uh, when we, we received the feedback from these uh, sales representatives after this session of training, because they, they had like sales analytics, marketing, logistics, everything, everything. So I was the last one with hour and a half, about 90 minutes time. So in 90 minutes time, I had to explain the whole credit control to them. I did what I did. And... I distributed these papers among them and uh, then I received the highest the highest marks in terms of feedback from my sales colleagues and uh, later on I said that it was very helpful so I was said by some of them who changed their job but they said we're still using it and I was really surprised and uh, and in, in 2015, I came to Ukraine uh, to, to have kind of one hour session uh, with the business school uh, to present credit management to them. 
and one of the attendees of this uh, one of the attendants of this uh, session was um uh, was my former colleague from the company where i was doing that training and he just came to me with that papers it was with that 10 pages and simply asked me to sign <laughs> obviously i did that with pleasure so this person made a career from wholesale representative to marketing and sales director if i'm not mistaken who is now and he was keeping these 10 pages obviously i was doing many, many other things but he was keeping these 10 pages as one of the most important piece of knowledge he had i was really grateful i didn't make a picture but uh if he hears me now gleb thank you very much for keeping this and because this is really you know heart touching thing for myself uh sharing knowledge is really important again uh, you need to learn from them and you need to share you need to share your knowledge with them every time they ask uh, training for salespeople is, is is really one of the most helpful things so when people ask me as a consultant what is the best way to improve credit management within the company i said simply train credit sales people in credit management uh, another good feedback it's not only feedback on my job if if other trainer would do that in a similar way i think they will receive the the same result but when we were discussing the training uh, one of the companies one of my clients uh, hired me for that training and i was hired not by cfo not by somebody else by by sales director and when we were discussing the training after our discussion he said look we better do that because in that case uh in that case our sales people become more competitive and when after after the training i had his feedback and he, he reconfirmed that he said look we understood that our sales people when they come to to the to the customer office they can solve so many issues without calling finance without calling sales director without calling anybody because they understand that if customer is asking 180 days they know what to say if customer is asking for the high credit limit we know they know what to say if customer wants to adjust the price or adjust something something or that they know already know what to say they are not taking their mobile and going to call no they are effective they are competitive and they are significantly more creative after that so knowledge sharing is is an endless process each time you you have something new each time you have something, um, you, you, you have new development, share with them, uh, share knowledge. And if there is something new on their side, learn it. Try, try to learn and add to your, about customers, about competitors, about market itself, about change in the, about change in the industry. Change knowledge, this will maintain um, this, May, this this will maintain a dialogue between you and your sales team and you you know seamless you you are becoming part of their team and they'll they will appreciate that they will appreciate it i can promise it's just like uh famous uh i mean i hope some of you know what what is pink floyd a famous track by pink floyd where by the way, uh, Hawking says, all we need to do is make sure we keep talking. So keep talking with them. Keep talking with sales. Continue to be part of their team and they will value you. They will place you exactly in the place you deserve. Um, after these four steps, uh, as, a, as I wrote uh, in the announcement, the results 
we started to get was really dramatic, was dramatically better than it was in the very beginning. Thanks to this cooperation, thanks to many, many tactics, many operating, operating approaches we created over the time. We were not the, you know, the biggest company in the market, but we were paid on time. Uh, to give you an example, we had quite hard customer and with all of our efforts, with everything we did, they didn't want to pay on time. Although it was not in, uh, you know, in their favor in terms of finance, because they had to compensate us for the late payment in certain way. But we were like, it, it was not really, it, it, for, for them paying, uh, paying late was very close to loss making position in trade with us, but they continued to do so due to their own, I don't know, you know, sanitary reasons. Uh, and the collection part was done by myself's colleagues and they did everything they're able to do and customers still didn't pay on time. And uh, then the sales salesperson came to me and said, Andrei, we, 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 we tried our best, but we cannot get them paid on time. And I had to say in response that, look, this amount of overdue is so tiny and so small. So it, you know, it could not be worth all of the efforts. And anyway, you know, overdue, this impact of overdue is already compensated. So let's keep it as it is. So we can see how overdue looks like because otherwise we can't forget this was the only customer who wasn't paying on time uh, in our portfolio so let's give this customer to to remember how overdue looks like just like this whatever whatever drastic or funny you find uh, this could be this was the case and uh, Obviously, we, we, we nearly we didn't have we didn't have uh, bad debts over a long period of time. The overdue was, you know, we, we, we it was an impossible even to calculate it in percent. It was so tiny, just one customer. And it looks like we did everything possible, so there is nothing else to do. But the you know, the beauty of credit management, and this is our fifth break for today, is in forward thinking. So we need to look forward in order to, I mean, we know that we got very good situation, but we also know that the market will change, the risk of our portfolio will change, the business of our customers will change, industry is subject to change, and so on and so forth. So we need to foresee what's going to happen. And we need to deal with it in, in a proactive way in order to prevent. So being in this position where we already cooperate, where we understand each other, it's a great opportunity to be used in order to prevent issues which might happen. So we are not, we were not dealing with overdue on a so anymore. We are not dealing with overdue collection, we started to work with overdue prevention. In very general terms, credit management is preventive collection. So we collect or we, we are making customers paying on time, but it's not only payment issues or bad debts issues. We've got other issues for deal with, to deal with. One of them is excess of credit, of credit limit. Well, I believe you, a majority of you uh, work within credit management and you know how big part of our job is release the sales orders. So how does it look like? It looks like we need to ship to a customer. Our colleagues in logistics create sales order and this sales order is blocked because credit limit is not enough. Once uh, one of my colleagues give me a call and say, look, we've got... I'm calling you in respect of blocked sales order and we've got credit limit access. I said, if you call me when the sales order is blocked, it's already too late. Because now we are dealing with the transport, came to our warehouse, we are, we are, we are, we are dealing with the 
driver of that truck who is going around the, the warehouse smoking nervously and you know saying all the nice words about our company and his own company and everybody everybody and we are trying to find a solution on that sh in that short period of time we need to do we, we need to deal with that much more earlier and for that as i promise above there is a concept of what is called credit demand you know knowing that knowing that we need to sell certain or we, we plan to sell certain amount of goods to our customer let's take one customer as example we know that there is certain level of receivables to support these sales so each time each time we we we've got new sales focused and sales people normally they are focused in their sales if we know that the sales focus is increased we know that there is that there will be a need of higher receivables to support these sales and if we know that we suppose we, we, we can calculate this based on focus based on our existing credit term and then to see whether or not our current credit limit will be enough i implemented this approach first time i think in 2006 back in ukraine i well i cannot even express how happy my sales colleagues were with it so i offered them a solution i i create we, we created an excel template where uh which was able to calculate with our specific credit term how much credit is required so if there is an excess they come back to us and but they come back to us in advance before the issue happened and we can prevent it we still have time to discuss it we still have time to call customer and discuss possible solution with them and we can be proactive this way we can have this what is called positive time gap because issue is not happened yet we can find solution we have time we have resources we can instead of doing let's sorry firefighting we can simply have coffee and discuss see options discuss options with other parts like logistics like uh like customer so we 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 we, we to be you know to, to give a simple simple solutions could be you know move payments to early or to later move shipments and find other solutions like make an exception or provide or increase temporarily kind kind of guarantee depending on the specific situation but we still have time for that and we are proactive and preventive way of doing things will always be the reactive one always and this will make our cooperations even deeper because in terms of psychology because here we are discussing our relationship with sales when two parts discuss in common future we i mean we improve our relations and get them to the nice le to, to the next level and this increases what is called common understanding because there is i mean in addition to relations there is nothing more important not, not nothing more as important as common understanding when we as credit people our sales colleagues and uh, a customer understand things equally uh, commonly where 30 days means <clears throat> 30 calendar days from the date from the shipment date to invoice due date and this i mean the payment supposed to come to to our bank account by the end of that due date and so on and so forth uh, in order to do that you may join all the all the events by sales people if you are allowed and ask for that permission from sales director requested go for any sales meeting you're allowed to go even though they might discuss something internal 
ask for you, ask for permission and come. Sit humbly, you know, sim- you know, simply sit humbly in the in you know in the left rear corner. Simply listen, try to understand their life, uh, and uh, continue to learn from them and continue to share knowledge. This brick number five is actually the last ones, but look forward because, you know, attending their meetings, attending meetings, by the way, meetings of marketing, because usually marketing activities are affecting the volume, which and the volume affects the turnover with customers and turnover with customers mainly mean fluctuations in the accounts receivable, which you will be extremely interested to know because fluctuation in receivables changes the credit demand of a company. And this is again forward thinking. Brick number five. Uh, before I came to the last, uh, I would come to the to the last brick. I need to tell you two main reservations. Uh, the first one is as you may see already, uh, it's not the easy way to go through. So sometimes there is there are difficult situations, and the, as you may notice, the major part is to be done by you. You need to ask yourself very, very you know very honestly whether or not you are prepared for that because it's not a rosy work and uh, it doesn't mean you will be appreciated from the first from your first attempt i mean if you are lucky enough yes but too often you will have hard discussions you will have you know difficult situations just because of your initiative so don't expect your initiative to be you know appreciated from the first or second or third or even fifth or fifteenth attempt so you need to be prepared to do hard work and you need to be prepared to go you know quite long distance until you got the result so if you are not if you are not ready for that maybe maybe it would be good to leave things as they are and for instance, find, you know, join another company or find another job if it is too difficult. So you need to be prepared for that. And second thing, second reservation. Uh, as I said, there are some companies who can afford very strict, very rigid credit policy. For them, things like relationship between sales and credit are not really necessary. So this means that in that in that environment in that exclusive credit environment there is no need in that relations or maybe there is no need in that deep relations so you need to be you need to be very careful with that because sometimes you know in some situations attempt to build these relations might be negatively perceived by your management so again Think twice before you do that long story. And the last and the sixth brick in building relationship with sales is as simple as enjoy and celebrate. Share with them results. Be ready to applause to their achievement, their achievement in terms of volume. Uh, in terms of uh, you know in terms of market share and things like that and if you appreciate i mean go for you know for for parties together you know on all these meetings and everything and uh, i mean as i as for every brick i'm sharing with you personal example this time let me let me use negative one, uh, of sort of no, not negative, sad one. Uh, one one of the years we already, when we after we already built very good relationship with our sales team. Um, 
the management of the company because we were quite big uh, team it's more than thousand people decided to make christmas party separately for headquarters and for the sales team for me and my credit team that was really a tragedy because we wanted to be with our colleagues with sales i even came to sales director and despite our extremely extremely good relationship he didn't make an exception for us and uh, we were really sad because we were not allowed to see our colleagues we, we we normally we work on the telephone we we don't see them every day and for us christmas party was a good chance to see everyone together but what we did we went for their uh, big meeting uh, Big so before the Christmas party, they had separately they had quite big meeting uh, in the hall. So we went for that meeting. We were allowed to do that. We seen everyone, and after the Christmas party, next day, next morning, they the whole the you know all the people in the whole state wholesale team uh, invited us to have coffee and breakfast together. And we went there and we seen them and we you know we shook hands we made a big hug with everyone and we actually spent good two hours as a team and uh well it's not like rocket science this building of relations but uh, you know if i can add the last argument well as I said, with all the reservations I said above, it's just, you know, these good relations with the sales team simply make your life easier, make your job easier. We're already doing difficult job. We've got lots of difficult things to do in, 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 any different, in, in many different extents. But if we can make this relationship, this relationship really make our life much more easier and we got less stress, the significantly less stress in the office, in our job, because credit management job, everybody knows it is stressful. So we can, you know, building this relation helps us to reduce this stress. And this is the last may be the last personal argument for doing so well thank you very much for listening that carefully <laughs> and if you have any questions uh, i am really open to them so please don't hesitate to type them or now is just the right time to un unmute yourself and ask questions i will be pre pretty happy to answer them Well, um, as we used to say in Russian, the absence of questions really... Well, I have some question if it's possible. Okay. Ah, it's a lot of questions. Well, it's a thank you very much for, for your very interesting presentation. It's really very, very interesting. And my question devoted to the two possible strategies, which are uh, the framework of your, of your um, ideas. Mm -hmm. First, uh, this is st uh, strategy for, for better credit est risk estimation and for um, contact with sales and maybe find, find to something which uh, um, can be provided by the credit. So this is focus for better risk risk estimation. Alternative second uh, second uh, when we consider when we consider um, customers and divide these customers for um, low income or for and for high income. It may be different things. It may be more ordering different different um, goods from company and buying these and second it's maybe lifetime value is more in this case 
uh, maybe not focus um, for for for, for risk uh, so so clear because you can fix risk in some level which is uh, this example benchmark or some um, acceptable level mm -hmm. but focus for customers which in, increase more volume so the logic from the risk uh, we uh, estimate risk better and better and second we put risk level acceptable and then focus for customers which increase more ordering of your more sales mm -hmm. how do you think this to to strategy <laughs> Well, Andre, thank you very much. Uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this would be an announcement of our. Uh, let, let, let me start from the announcement of now of our next event. Uh, welcome, uh, Andre Kaminsky, Professor Andre Kaminsky. I'm sorry. So we've got very interesting question, and he will be our my co speaker and our main guest for our next event. Please don't hesitate. Don't don't forget to register for it. Um, we will we start our new rubric, which is called Credit Science, and Professor Andrei Kaminsky will be the the guest of the first event. Andrei, thank you very much for joining us today. <laughs> um, I will have to return, although it might not might not be found uh, quite positive. But if you can forgive me. Um, may I ask you whether or not risk assessment is a ready-made decision? I don't no need to answer. No need to answer. The thing is, you see, um, why I say so? Because the risk assessment, or as you rightly said, risk estimate, um, is, is, is a ready-made decision in the environment of what we discussed exclusive red credit where we are allowed to choose customers when we got hyper demand like for financing like banking system has for one customer asking you know granted credit they got another 10 who refused the the main uh, i would say the main Proof for that is that global trade finance gap, which is growing every year. It is growing, growing, growing. It is expected to be $2.5 trillion over the year. But uh, not every creditor is in that position. The problem is a uh, significant part, as I said, about 75% of companies are in much more de in an absolutely different situation where they use inclusive credit and where they have to compete. Uh, to give you an example, you know, the company entering the market knows that, you know, the products are sold at 30 days credit term. They know already the level of credit risk of their customers, but they cannot come to them and simply say, no, because of your credit risk, you will buy from us. Uh, let's say on cash in advance basis you know the reaction of customer customer will simply say okay no problem i will buy from your competitor and then what you well, what we what we can do some so in that environment in that part and this is the bigger part to my let's say to my bailey feeling is that uh we either provide credit and take risk or we simply stay out of business with the goods with the warehouse full of our goods so we need to sell we need to take to grant credit and to take risk therefore uh, risk assessment or risk estimate is to be is one part of the work where we estimate credit risk and then the risk credit demand where we simply say okay how much credit is needed to be given and how much credit we is safe to is is safe to be granted, and then we compare them, and then we take a decision what to do with difference. You see, obviously, if we can, if if it is um, if it is possible on the market, we obviously try to work with uh, lower risk, higher demand, uh, sorry, uh, higher profit customers. 
if we can choose, but too often we don't have choice. Um, quite another good example of that, um, you may know, and majority of our um, of our of our attendees know, uh, attendants know that um, retail is one of the riskiest uh, is one of the riskiest industries, you know, in the global economy. But some companies, uh, like in in fast moving consumer goods, cannot work without retail. Some 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 producers are able to work with with, with retailers, but significant part of them could either, could either distribute their goods through the retail or or build their own online platform. There are only two choices, and building an online platform takes time. So this means that their consumers will never see their goods until they build that platform. So they have to deal with retail, which is risky. And, uh, you know, sometimes people say, you know, these retailers are asking 180 days credit term. And nobody even asking them what is their what is their risk profile and they are delivering their goods. This is the environment where we are speaking with. So. Uh, if we compare, if we just, just to finish with that, you know, another big division of credit and decision making and approaches is that, um, you know, in, 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 in the area of trade credit, unlike in, in financial services like banking, credit is not a product itself. People used to say, okay, we are not in business of granting credit. Yes, absolutely. But we, we have to use this credit because in this case, credit is not a separate service. It is a, is a supportive service, which uh, makes it possible to sell goods and services. Unlike, unlike you know, quite different from the bank or from financial organization where the loan is granted, you know, at interest, at certain level of interest rate, and uh, but this loan is product itself; it has its own price, and demand is significantly higher. Obviously, there are competitors, but you can choose. Uh, in very general economic term, as far as I understand this. Um, Nothing bad happen if we refuse to grant credit to a certain customer. In trade credit, this might be different. Okay, it's interesting. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, oh, we got. I think we got another question. Let me. Andre, thank you very much for asking, and thank you very much for coming. Thank you chat okay many thanks but it's also a good idea that the credit team visit in person the customers for better understanding for their issues and needs because some credit team they are only relying either on the sales or communicating via credit emails yep if i pronounce your name correct correctly or correct me please Thank you very much for mentioning that. So each time you have chance to visit customer, do it. What, what I mean, simply you simply do it. Meet with them, speak with them, ask them for their needs. Ask them what else you can do for them. Ask them how how can you do your job better. I mean. I can only I can only celebrate your comment. Maybe uh, it was not clearly mentioned, but visiting customers is a good chance for every credit manager because you, how to say, uh, my favorite saying uh, from Zen Buddhism, which says that you know finger pointing the moon is not the moon. So everything you say that you know some credit team they only rely on either on sales or communicating via credit emails. This everything is finger pointing the moon. You need to look at the moon. Look at the moon. Visit customers. Speak with them. Uh, you know even if it is hard difficult situation it is always better to do it in person 
short version of my answer of my comment is absolutely absolutely every time you you you, you got a chance to speak with customer do that uh, any further questions well we will publish the record of today's event on LinkedIn. It will be on our page, Credit Engineering. Please don't hesitate to ask questions there. Don't hesitate to find me on LinkedIn and ask questions either personally or in public. And for today, and thank you very much for coming today, for finding time to join us and participate in our event. I wish you, as usual, higher sales, low losses, or as it could be said in French, bon crédit. See you on next event. Best of luck.